اليوم اليوم البطل من عندكم قربت السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا أرحم الراحمين I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us what benefit us benefit us from what he taught us and increase us in knowledge Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering and uh, make it from the gathering that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said it will be surrounded by angels and uh, the sakina that descends upon them and Allah will shower them with the mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention their name to the mal'a al-a'la Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen Today, inshallah ta'ala, our hero, unfortunately, very few people have heard of him, even though he's the man. He is from the country of my brother Abdul Latif and Abdul Aziz, and uh, all the Algerian brothers, we got to give them their share. <laughs> so who's that, ya Sheikh? Who's that, Abdul Aziz? Who's the... Very famous character, very famous hero. Huh? Ya Ahl al-Maghrib. La ya Jama'ah, Allah aib. Tayyib, we're going to change the hero, khalas. Yusuf? Yusuf bin Tashfin. Anybody heard of him? Raise your hand. Who heard of Yusuf bin Tashfin? See? Subhanallah. Now you're going to see why you should have heard of him, subhanallah. Yusuf bin Tashfin, rahimahullah, and when we mention our heroes and our scholars, always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on them. So Yusuf, rahimahullah, he was Barbary. Now, do you know what Barbar is? What are the Barbar? The Berber, as a matter of fact, they were from the people who, when Muslims, people think that the Berber is something new. The Berber, really, they were strong Muslims from the first year of Hijra. Very strong, very strong Muslims, people from the desert, يعني, from the mountains, very uh, stubborn on their opinion. Uh, kind, soft-hearted, but at the same time, they're very determined and uh, they get what they want. And Yusuf was Barbary. He was born, it says, في الصحراء الكبرى. الصحراء الكبرى, the big desert, the grand desert, includes Jazair, Maghrib, uh, you know, all this area over there, uh, Mauritania. He was born in the year 400 Hijri. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a very long life. He lived exactly 100 years. He died in 500 Hijri. So from 400 to, to 500. Let me just give you an idea about the Barbar and how, how things used to, used to go in that time. The French wanted desperately to separate between the Barbar and the Arab all the time, till this day. They want to separate between the Barbar and the Arab and create fights between them. And sometimes it worked. But most of the time, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah saved the Muslims from falling into this, this uh, plot. At the time of uh, Yusuf, rahimahullah, a lot of bid'ah, a lot of shirk, a lot of sihr and black magic was taking place in the African area. So there was a man, his name was Yahya ibn Ibrahim al sanhaji Yahya ibn Ibrahim al sanhaji He was one of the leaders who went one time to Hajj, and when he was in Hajj, on his way back, he stopped by Tunisia, and he met some scholars, and he told them what's going on in his city, in his country. So they sent with him 
a very well-known man also in that region. His name is Abdullah ibn Yasin. Abdullah ibn Yasin, a scholar in the authentic hadith. He came and he started teaching the people of Maghrib and Jazair, all that area, teaching them the right aqidah and bringing them back to, to Islam. He helped establish Dawlat al-Murabitin. Dawlat al-Murabitin. Which uh, include the Senegal, Mauritania, borders of Sudan, Algeria, Maghrib, all that area, and Tunis. When Yuhya, when Yahya, who brought Abdullah, died, I'm just making it very brief so I can get to Yusuf. When Yahya ibn Umar died, he assigned his brother Abu Bakr ibn Umar to be the leader. Keep in mind, this is not the Khilafa, they were not the Khalifa. The Khalifa over there, the Uthmani, was in Baghdad at that time. And the Khilafa in Baghdad was hardly ruling Baghdad. And the ruler, Abu Bakr ibn Umar, was ruling the whole that west side of Africa. So Abu Bakr took care of the political issues of the government, while Abdullah ibn Yasin took care of all the religious affairs. When Abdullah died, Abu Bakr ibn Umar was the leader in both political and religious. He had love for da'wah, love for da'wah. So he assigned his cousin Yusuf, our hero bin Tashfin, as the leader, as like, if you want to call him the president. Huh? And he told him, I am going for da'wah fi sabilillah. I'm going to uh, spread, convey the message, the message of Islam. Yusuf, at this time, he was born, his father died when he was young, he was raised as an orphan, and he, just like all our scholars and all our heroes, subhanAllah, if you see something in common, they all memorized the Qur'an at a young age. He memorized the Qur'an, he was in love with the deen, he was very well known with great, great manners. He, his, he is very famous for building Marrakesh. He was very famous for building Marrakesh and making it its the capital of the whole area, the whole region at that time. When he built Marrakesh, in the language of the Murambitin, Marrakesh, Marrakesh, it means Mur Sari'an, pass quickly. Just to show you to what kind of city he took. Marrakesh in their language means Mur Busura, yani pass quickly. Why? Because there were so many thieves and robbers, so you have to pass quickly <laughs> before they get you. So he came and cleaned Marrakesh from all these thieves and robbers, and he established uh, the deen in, in Marrakesh. Now, shuf subhanallah, yani, he established the deen and established justice. In his time was the best time ever for that area. The best time ever. Now look at the, there's a very beautiful point here. His cousin, Abu Bakr, came after, you know, there was no emails and all that to check up what's going on. You know, they could get some messages and messengers. But he came back after 15 years. And he saw all justice, uh, economy is good, everything's beautiful. Subhanallah, any normal leader would say what? Zakallah khair, thank you so much, you can go now. When he saw that everything is going beautiful, he said, I don't belong here. I officially assign you as the leader of this whole region, and let me go back and spread the deen. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> and if you know how many, not how many people took shahada on this man's hands, how many countries, how many countries became Muslims with the fadl of Allah first, then Abu Bakr's effort. Mali, Niger, all these areas became Muslims because of the effort of Abu Bakr ibn, ibn Umar, the cousin of Yasu, uh, Yusuf bin Tashfin. So 
he gave the authority to Yusuf and he went back to Dawa. Now, Yusuf is the official leader. He ran the whole country according to the Kitab and Sunnah. And the madhab that they followed at that time was Malik. Madhab Imam Malik. He made uh, all fiqhi issues under the fiqh of Imam Malik, rahimullah. Now, keep that on the side. Let's move to Andalus. Because, you know, if you look at the... I wish one time I'll, I'll bring you some pictures so you could live... Uh, live with me what, what, what I saw and how you get touched when you see like all these countries are ruled by, by one man you're talking about يعني, half or three quarters of a continent ruled by one man so now Andalus we know is in the corner right Andalus now keep in mind Yusuf was a desert man rough no luxury whatsoever. Murabitun was no luxury whatsoever. As a matter of fact, they said all he ate was lahm al-ibl and he drank the milk of the ibl, the, uh, the, the meat of the camels and their milk. That's all he eats. And subhanAllah, 100 years he lived. SubhanAllah. So, in Andalus, in Andalus, they made many small cities, many empires, and everybody assigned himself, mashaAllah, Amir al muminin on each city. Huh? And because they are surrounded by non-Muslims uh, at that time, they had problems with each other. And subhanAllah, it's exactly many of what's happening now. So they started seeking the help of non-Muslims to fight his brother. To the level that some countries gave other Muslim countries as a gift so I can stay in position. Deja vu. Huh? All these things are, subhanAllah, you think that this, these things that are happening now, is <laughs> history repeating itself. So they did the same thing. Huh? They gave Muslim leaders living in complete luxury. Huh? They gave countries they, for nothing, for nothing, just to stay in their, in their positions. Now, there was a man, there was a, a crusader, one of the leaders of the crusaders, his name was... Yes, Shabab. Al Alfonso, the the six. Alfonso the six. This guy was a very shrewd, very smart leader. He decided he wants to get rid of all the Muslims, get them out of the Andalus. He sent letter to all of them. Most of them surrendered. Most of them they fought with him. They lost, except one. One leader, one ruler. He sent him a letter, the ruler of Ishbilia. He sent him a letter. He said, I want you to give me this, 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 and that. I want this, this, and that. And I want my wife to deliver her baby in the masjid of Qurtuba, inside the masjid. Look how, يعني, how rude. A non Muslim woman, he wants his wife to deliver her baby inside the masjid, the biggest masjid. Why? Because their priests told him in order to take over that city of Spain, and the country of Spain, you have to have your son being delivered in the masjid that used to be a church. So this man, the leader, the Muslim leader, refused. He, was, he had some iman left in him. He had some nakhwa. Huh? He refused. And he said something that hardly anybody say in that region. He said, I'm going to contact Yusuf bin Tashfin. Usually, the people of Andalus, they don't bring Yusuf and Tashfin for these issues because they know that they are very hard on the deen and this will, it's not good for the business. Huh? All the other leaders told him, did not agree with him. And then he said, because khalas, Alfonso wants to come and take over everything. So he said, his famous statement, uh, he said, I'd rather breed camels in Africa than breed pigs in Europe. I would rather breed camels in Africa than breed pigs in Europe. What does he mean? That means, worst case scenario, I'm going to be a slave to anybody. I'd rather be a slave to my brother and do camels in Africa than be a slave to these crusaders. Now, Yusuf bin Tashfin 
at that time was around 80 years old. He's not young. He got the message that we need your help. We need your help against the Crusaders. They made a deal with him to give him uh, a, a piece of land for his, you know, for his people, not for him personally. And they agreed, and he came right away. He crossed. While he was crossing you know, the, the sea over there to go to the Andalus, there was a major storm, a major storm. And he was from the Qa'imin. He was from the people who prayed to Hajjud. So he got up. While the storm is very heavy, huh? he got up in the middle of the night, he raised his hand and said, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, if this trip, this venture is good for the Muslim Ummah, calm the ocean down. And if it's not, Ya Allah, make us go back. He said, Wallahi, he did not finish his dua except the ocean went very smooth and calm. Subhanallah. So he continued and he went to, uh, to the Andalus. He went to Ishbilia and he had a great plan. One of the plans he did, subhanAllah, look at the, how the, why these people became leaders. On the uh, trip from uh, uh, his country, from Algiers, to Andalus, he took with him many, many, many camels. Many camels. At that time, the people of Andalus, the people of Spain, never seen a camel in their life. Never. So they were really I mean, astonished with the, with the camels. You know, you've never seen an animal in your life. Plus there was no pictures at that time. And the horses, the faras, the horses of the city, they got scared. So every time they see the camel, they got scared. So they start running away. So he wanted to use that in the battle to scare the horses of Alfonso. SubhanAllah, <laughs> who would think of that? I mean, to bring a camel with you? And camel is not one camel, and we know the size of a camel, I mean, SubhanAllah. So, when the people of Andalus saw the Murabitin, when they saw them coming in, in, in thousands, they came in, they say some numbers say 24,000. Now keep in mind, these are very spoiled. Islam was not too strong in Andalus, and they saw these men, real men. All they coming for jihad. That's all they coming for. They're seeing, يعني, <laughs> all they want is the rid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their hearts start soften. And with the 24,000 of Yusuf, 24,000 from the Andalus joined the army. Subhanallah, يعني, there is always in the heart of the Muslims, there's always something soft. You know, they will come back always to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though they were very far. And the people of, uh, with, the, with the Yusuf Tashfi and Rahimullah, they're looking at this, at this luxury and they've never seen something like this before. What is this? This is I mean, too much. So they had 24,000 and it was said that Alfonso had 100,000. And the year, the battle, very famous battle. What's the name of the battle? Very famous battle. az zallaqa Ma'arakat al zallaqa 479 Hijri took place. And that battle, ya akhwan, let me just tell you the details a little bit. So 100,000 versus 48,000. Alfonso, mashallah, full of akhlaq, manners. He told Yusuf, he sent him a message, he said, you know, tomorrow's Jum'ah, it was just like now, just like today. He said, tomorrow's Jum'ah is your holiday. And then Sunday is our holiday. So let's start fighting on Monday. Akhlaq, <laughs> mashallah. The ruler of, who, who called uh, Al-Mu'tamid, who called uh, Tashfin to come, he told him this is a trick. <laughs> These people don't know anything about Friday. <laughs> or they want to just come and, and exactly, exactly what the Amir told him. And because Tashfin knew, they exactly on Friday, Right in the middle of the day, they came and attacked. Long story short, they, the enemy was defeated, was defeated so bad that from the 100,000, yani you will not, guess how many people were left? 500 people. 
All the rest were dead, killed. 500 people. And that, ya ikhwan, delayed the loss of Andalus 400 years. This is the importance of Tashfin. That delayed, you know, because the Andalus is gone, 879. In 479, this battle happened and gave the Muslims another 400 years of ruling. Otherwise, subhanAllah, of course, always this is the taqdeer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he picks these men to take care of these uh, battles and these eras that we could still remember them till, till this day. They asked now, why did the other rulers hated Tashfin to come? They were scared that when he takes, when, he, when the battle finished, he's going to take over. So what he did is, he left it and went back. Went back to Algiers. Second time they asked him, come back and fight for us. Something happened again with the crusaders. He went back. Third time, he saw that these people are not really learning anything about the deen. And every time he comes and support them, free them, and then they go back, disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at that time, which sheikh was extremely famous? Hamid al-Ghazali. Huh? Sheikh al-Ghazali. So he asked him for a fatwa, what should I do? All the shaykh, including Hamid al-Ghazali, told him, include al-Andalus to your, under your rule. And he did. Include the Andalus, the Andalus under your, your rule. He built many, many masajid. As a matter of fact, the biggest masjid in Al-Jazair Al-An now is built by him. The biggest masjid since he built in that day till now, it's still, it's still there. And after the, after the uh, victory of uh, Al-Andalus, he was named Amir Al-Muslimin. He refused to be called Amir Al-Mu'mineen. And subhanAllah, he sent a messenger, he sent a messenger, and he sent a message to the Amir al-Mu'mineen of Baghdad, who was so weak, their khilafah was so weak at that time, he told him, Ana, bil Arabi, Ana taht amrak, I am under your control. Whatever you want from me, let me know. SubhanAllah, this man has half or three quarters of a continent, and the other guy has Baghdad, and he's telling him just in order not to separate between the Muslims, not to say that the Muslims are separated, not to look for names and titles. We want to serve this deen. Subhanallah. We want to serve this deen. After, uh, uh, in the year 500, he, he passed away, and subhanallah, if you look at uh, one of the shiyukh, he did a, a graph. You see, <laughs> everything went down the drain, downhill after his death. Things started getting bad and worse and worse until the, uh, the Khilafah was gone and the, the, I mean the Andalus was gone and subhanAllah, many, many battles happened. So the name I want you to remember is Yusuf bin Tashfin. Yusuf bin, bin Tashfin. Now, subhanAllah, ya akhwan, one thing we learn from these people is that their dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their dedication to the haqq. They are ready. They know that this hayat dunya is temporary. And they were working for the akhirah. All their efforts were for the akhirah. All the efforts were to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything they did. Now we have the election coming up in our masjid. And I know, mashallah, that the people who are nominated, it's not themselves that they put themselves in that position. People chose them. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, they are all good people, mashaAllah. But I want, I have a message for them, inshaAllah ta'ala. The message is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The message is not from me. As one of your religious leaders, I have to advise you whether you are running or you are voting. If you are running, the hadith is in Bukhari. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and I would like to read the hadith both in Arabic and in English قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ما من عبد استرعاه الله رعية فلم يحطها بنصيحة إلا 
لم يجد رائحة الجنة. I don't want to scare you, but just to get you to know what are you coming to. It's not an easy matter. Let me translate. قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Any man whom Allah, because nothing happened without his permission, any man whom Allah has given the authority of ruling some people, some people, and he does not look after them in honesty, he will not smell Jannah. He will not smell Jannah. If you feel you're going to be a position in a position, you're going to separate between the Arab and the Pakistan, you're going to separate between the brothers of the masjid, be careful. Be very careful. You are in charge of the Arab and the Pakistan and the Indians and the Bengal and uh, all. These are all ukhwa. They are all brothers and sisters in Islam. If you feel that you have tendency to favor someone over the other, wallahi, stay home, ahsan lak. It's better for you. Because you are risking Jannah. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a joke. Be fair. Now for the brothers who are voting, inshallah ta'ala, like I said, all the brothers are good, mashallah, but maybe there are some brothers are better than others in running the issues of the masajid. Istashir thumma istakhir. Ask people around if you don't know them very well, and then pray istikhara before, because fawa rabbik, fawa rabbika lanas'alannahum ajma'een amma kanu ya'maloon. Allahu Akbar. Allah is swearing by himself. Yani, does Allah need to swear, ya akhwan? And by himself, ya Muhammad, I'm swearing by myself. I will ask them all. I'm going to ask them all. Why did you vote for this guy? Is he a good candidate to run a masjid? A house of Allah? Did he show some qualities that qualify him? Or just because somebody told me, I don't know. No, no ya akhi, there's nothing I don't know. This is a big responsibility. Wallahi, out of love and out of concern. And at the end of the day, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to, to take charge, will take charge. And we beg Allah. And we ask Allah in this blessed night, the night of Jum'ah. Ya Allah, whomsoever is good to run this masjid, on the kitab and sunnah. And Ya Allah, whomsoever is good to unite our hearts and make us love one another and sustain and make this masjid move forward towards you, Ya Allah, assign them to run this masjid. Say Ameen from your heart. Ameen from your heart. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So Ya Akhwan, this is just as a person in, of responsibility advising his brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the best of us to rules us, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us always love one another for his sake. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, keep this masjid away from all the bid'ah and keep this masjid on the kitab and sunnah. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakum Allah khair. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Nashadan la ilaha illa ant. Mastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.